Okay, so now that we have a conceptual idea of what's happening with cable theory, let's make an electrical equivalent circuit so that we can figure out equations. Excellent. Okay, so let's start with our cable, I guess. Good idea. So if this is a nice thin cable. Um, and we're going to divide it into pieces. And what's the advantage of dividing into small pieces? Well, we can look at these as sort of discrete parts of a circuit. And we could pretend that for that discrete part, the voltage isn't changing too much. Mm -hmm. So we could talk about it. Now let's, let's label things. The location in the center that you indicated there, let's call that x. Mm -hmm. The distance from x to the next little location, let's call that distance delta x. And so that next place is labeled x plus delta x. And then the one before should be labeled x minus delta x. Excellent. And we're going to have voltages corresponding to each of those three places. So at x, the voltage is? That's V of x. Right. And at the next place over, the voltage is? V of x plus delta x. Uh-huh. And then before, it's? V of x minus delta x. All right. Let's start at x, and let's just, why don't you circle that part of the cable, and let's turn that into an electrical equivalent circuit. Remember, there's a lipid bilayer, and then there are mm -hmm. passive channels. And how do we represent that? Our lipid bilayer is our capacitance. Right, and it has a certain amount of capacitance, C sub m. And our channels have a resistance. Exactly. And that's labeled R of m. And, and it goes from inside the cell to outside, to outside the cell. Exactly. And that's, we've seen this before, that's our classic electrical equivalent circuit. Yep. And that's V, and the voltage across that is V of X at that point, right? Right up here. Right, V of X. And that goes across from in to out. That's right, across the whole thing. In fact, well, that looks almost like a current, so you might want to have a double-headed arrow to indicate that's not flowing in or out. It's just a measure. Okay, that's good. I like that. Yes. Much better. Okay. Now let's do the one at X plus delta X. Why don't you circle it? and then take an arrow to take us to that electrical equivalent circuit, which looks awfully familiar. So we've got our... That's right. So it's just exactly the same, more or less. Now, outside, you've got a lot of fluid with a lot of ions in it, mm -hmm. and so you could connect those two electrical equivalent circuits with just a wire, basically. Good. Inside, however, you have cytoplasm. Which probably has some resistance to Exactly, it. and that resistance is a function of distance. So let's draw the resistor, and we would say that that resistance is Ri times that distance, which is delta x. Good. And we don't need to label Cm or Rm, but the voltage across at this location is V of x plus delta x at this location. So this is V of... We may want to write it outside, because yeah, it's going to be really it's a hard small. to do. That's right. But you could draw the arrows across that tie. That's right. And then that's V of X plus delta X right there across that little piece. And now we can finish this by going back in space. And doing the same thing. Exactly. So we've got sister. That's right. We've got our capacitor. That's right. It connects outside via... Same thing. Just a line. Just a wire. And this... Again, is Ri delta x. Ri delta x. And the key thing is if we, okay, so yeah, what, that's right, the arrow, that's V of x minus delta x. And let's again, let's draw the circle here on the membrane and draw a line to it. Yeah, the arrow and then there, that arrow. And there we are. We have an electrical equivalent circuit. And there's a current flowing inside the membrane. Mm -hmm. So let's say from the first to the second point, we'll call that current I of X. I'm going to make my arrows shorter. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Gives us more room. So this current right here. That's a current flowing, and that that's called I of X. I of X. And then you have another current flowing out of that point, which is called I of X plus delta X. Exactly. And now, if those currents aren't the same, if they're the same, how much current flows out through the membrane? 
So that would be really quick. Why don't you put the parentheses there to finish that? Oh, yes. Good. So, so the current flowing out. We'll call that IM times the distance it flows out, which is delta x. And how much flows out if the current in is equal to the, cur the current flowing into that point is equal to the current flowing out of that point? None. Exactly. None will flow out. None will flow out. Okay. So we now have the electrical equivalent circuit, and the rest of this is going to be some algebra. We can take the cable away. And now what we can say is that I am delta x, from what you just said, delta x. No, times up delta here, x. up there. Right, times delta x. Yeah. Is equal to these currents. So that would be... I of x, I of x minus, minus I of x plus delta x. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just rewrite everything in terms of voltages, because mm -hmm. that makes things a lot simpler. It'll be more complicated for a while, and then it'll get much simpler. And then it'll get super pretty. We all promise. Right. We promise. So let's do I of x all the way up here. We can read that off as follows. I of x is equal to V of x minus delta x. minus V of X divided by Ri delta X. Just the difference in voltages divided by the resistance, it's Ohm's law. Yes. Next piece, I, X, I of X plus delta X. Okay, we can read that off from the electrical equivalent circuit. That's V of X minus V of X plus delta X. Mm-hmm all divided by Ri delta x. All right, now if we take the difference of those two, which you want to do here, we have a common denominator. So we can just, on, underneath, just write Ri delta x. And let's just copy things down. This is V of x minus delta x. Minus V of x. Go ahead, close the bracket, minus V of X minus V of X plus delta X. Beautiful. Almost got it the right. Now, underneath this, we're going to rewrite this. All we're going to be doing is some rewriting of algebra. So that equals. Now take the minuses up here and push them through. And that's going to, we can rewrite this then, because that's going to become up here, over here. Mm -hmm. V of x plus delta x, right? The minus minus becomes V of x plus delta x minus V of x. Don't forget the parentheses there. Yep. Minus V of x. And now we're going to have a minus, no, put the minus right in line. Put put brackets around yeah, that. That's, that's what, what I think I you're doing. Good. Minus. And now if we take a minus out of the front terms, put a bracket. And we could say V of X minus V of X minus delta X. And notice if we multiply the minus through, we get what we have on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. all over Ri delta X. Now over here, let's define this notion that if I take a function, any function, I had a nice, like nice way of writing it. A blue. Yes, that's a nice fancy F. And I add... I say f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So I'm just saying, if I increment the function a little and subtract it from its original value at x, I'm going to define that as delta f of x. It's just how I define that term. Well, I can now go down here and rewrite this much more simply. The first term becomes just delta v of x, right? You see how that I that's the same thing. Instead of f, I use v, and I get v of x plus delta x minus v of x. Mm -hmm. And then that is minus, the second whole term, becomes delta v of, of x, x minus, minus delta x. x. So delta v x, x minus delta, delta x, x all over ri delta x. It's getting simpler. And now we're going to take it one more step. If we had a function called delta v of x, down here, yeah. we could see from the definition that's just the same as delta of, or delta, delta of, of, delta of, delta v of x minus delta x. 
That's just the definition. All, all over, over RI delta X. And a simpler and faster way of writing that is just That's down I'm here. Missing. I was missing a parenthesis. All right. Delta squared V of X minus delta X over RI delta X. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move, yeah, IM delta X is equal to that. Now over here, why don't we just write, since it's so much simpler, why don't we say IM is equal to, and let's divide both sides by delta X, mm -hmm. is equal to delta squared V of X minus delta X divided by RI delta X squared. Mm -hmm. Now if we let this go, delta X gets small, this become a derivative. Mm -hmm. But what we need to remind ourselves is that V is actually a function of X and T. And T, yeah. And so we, instead of using just the little d, we use a partial sign, which is a sign that it's a function of more than one thing. Yep. Okay? So we're going to write this as I am is equal to I am is equal to partial squared V, and let's not worry about the, okay, with respect to X squared. So over X squared, because we've let X squared. Right, that would have been DX and now becomes partial X times one over R, R I, one over R I. Okay, so we would be done here, but we would like to talk about the membrane current. And if we go back to the electrical equivalent circuit, the membrane current runs through two paths. It runs through the capacitor and it runs through the resistor. So we can say that Rm is actually equal to the sum of two currents, right? That I am is I the am. sum sorry, of two sorry. currents. I am, sorry, sorry. Im is the sum of two currents. Thank you. I am is equal to, and what are those two currents? It would be the capacitive current uh -huh. and the resistive current. All right. So let's see if we can write those out. I am then is equal to now, what's the resistor? What's the capacitive current? Well, um, in our old equations, it was C, C membrane times dV, dV dt. dt. That's right. It's equal to I capacitor. But now, because it's a partial, it's a function of both space and time. We're just going to write it a slightly differently. We're going to say it's little cm times partial of v with respect to t. Uh, yeah, yeah, a V again, with, with its with respect X and to T, T, which means yeah. divide by partial T. Again, we're leaving implicit that V is a function of X and T. To make it simple. Mm -hmm. Plus, and now we have Ohm's law. So V, v equals I R. So v, v over R M. And now we can equate the two things that we have by we bringing have this, this back piece into it. and that. So we now can say, and then it's all in V. Partial V, partial squared V partial x squared, 1 over ri, is just equal to cm partial v partial t plus v over rm. Let's move that all over to one side mm -hmm. by subtracting those two terms. So partial squared v partial x squared, 1 over ri, minus cm partial d Partial. Loop. Yeah, make sure that's a partial, not a D. Yeah. Loop. Partial T. We want to rewrite that a little bit. It's, it looks like too much like a D. They both look more or less the same to me. There, good. Minus V over RM equals zero. Okay, we're almost, we're almost done. Multiply everything by RM, and you end up with partial squared V, partial X squared. Rm over Ri minus Rmcm partial V partial T minus V equals zero. Now let's define, we can erase some of the stuff over here because we're not going to use it anymore to the algebra stuff. Let's define, so let's define this Rm over Ri. Yeah. And the C and R M C M. So let's say R M over R I. We'll call it lambda squared, where lambda is the space constant. I will have more to say about that later. 
and then RMCM is tau, or the time constant. All right, let's finish erasing this stuff. Let's make it pretty, because I'd like us now on this side. Yeah, we might as well erase all of this just to make it nice and simple. If we use those definitions, we can rewrite what we have on the bottom here, and now we have plenty of space. And write it in, in red, because it's super important. It's super important. Lambda squared times partial squared v partial x squared. Minus tau partial v partial t. I'm trying to make my partials easy to they see. Look good. Minus v equals zero. Let's put a box around it. That is the cable equation. And so going back. This says that the difference in differences at a spatial location are going to be equal to the current that flows across, which is going to be a function both of the capacitance and of the resistance. And we've captured two key yardsticks, a space constant and a time constant. And those will make more sense when we either allow time to go away by waiting for a long time so everything settles down and that second term disappears because the capacitor isn't charging or discharging, or we let space go away by making a spherical cell. And then we'll, in the, each case, it simplifies to an ordinary differential equation. Which we can solve. Which we can solve much more easily. All right, so there is the cable equation. It took a lot of steps, but this is, this is an important it, thing to get to. That's right. And it's pretty. And it is actually pretty.